This is Boston Lanka News bringing you news, views and entertainment from Boston and USA. I'm Vayoni Tim. We join with Chamin De Hetiarachi, an internationally recognized expert in technology management in Sri Lanka. Chaminda has more than 20 years of experience working in the strategic management industry and in the academia in Sri Lanka and overseas. Chaminda has worked and lived in Pakistan, Germany, Switzerland, Spain and Sweden as a technology and management consultant and worked with German multinationals such as Mercedes-Benz and T-Mobile. Chaminda uh, you are joining from Berlin, Germany. To begin this conversation, could you first share with us the reason uh, you are in Berlin? Yeah, uh, thank you. It's a pleasure to actually be back in touch with Boston Lanka. Now, I am here as a DART scholar on uh, disaster management, uh, following pro a training program disaster management as a DART scholar at Humboldt University in Berlin. Uh, Humboldt University is one of the oldest universities in uh, Berlin as well as in Germany. Uh, it's interesting because this is a, a place where people like uh, Einstein, Karl Marx, Frederick Engels study, as well as the university has produced about 29 Nobel Prize winners. Now I am uh, affiliated with a place called SLE, it's a Center for Rural Development Trust into English in that way. So it's an institute which has been training uh, professionals in development cooperation in Germany as well as outside for 50 years. So I am part of that uh, community uh, in the uh, uh, institute and in the university. So that is my main uh, research to be in uh, Germany and in Berlin. You have done a research work in Sri Lanka on disaster management. And you were at Harvard in Boston last year on US South Asia Leader Engagement Program on Disaster Management. Uh, so what are the benefits to you and for Sri Lanka for participating at this program in Berlin? Yeah, okay. Now it's an interesting question because uh, uh, many people already asked this question. Now, uh, disaster management is a multidisciplinary subject and it's also an emerging subject as a new uh, uh, kind of a, uh, subject which is getting importance and attention from different scholars and uh, policy makers. Now, at Harvard Kennedy School last year, uh, uh, I did uh, it's uh, actually more on a policy level program where people from all South Asian countries came to be like uh, senior people uh, from military diplomatic uh, circles and government and discuss about how to collaborate among countries in policy level in managing disasters in the regional level. But uh, this program at, uh, in, in Berlin is more about project level, community level and local level implementation of disaster related uh, project as well as assisting and uh, managing disaster uh, and disaster uh, risk reduction. So it's a uh, different scope, in, uh, different tools as well as uh, techniques used. And also, uh, as you can see, this is a European way of managing uh, disasters compared to North America or American way of managing. So there are terminology differences as well as methodological differences. This is important for people like me. Uh, coming from Sri Lanka to understand both uh, way of doing uh, maybe the same thing. Now, uh, uh, what I gain out of that is uh, it's actually additional knowledge to my existing maybe expertise or knowledge on disaster management. So I'll be able to utilize this uh, newly learned or acquired skill in my teaching and training and in my research work in Sri Lanka. Now, uh, now we should we should actually realize that Sri Lanka is a disaster. Uh, Cold country where we have a uh, lot of floods, uh, hurricanes, I and mean, not necessarily tsunamis coming frequently, but then we are go to a uh, lot of disasters, different types of disasters. So uh, people from Sri Lanka, especially professionals from multidisciplinary, uh, professionals from Sri Lanka should uh, train and get knowledge about disaster management as a subject. And now Sri Lanka as a disaster, pro disaster country, we have to have experts or specialists. Uh, trained with disaster management. Uh, when I say expert and uh, professional or specialist, uh, what we currently have is mainly uh, military people or uh, people uh, from the science background. But I think now uh, we need more social scientists, multidisciplinary professionals working in uh, disaster uh, management in Sri Lankan situation. 
So uh, my advice to other Sri Lankan professions to come to uh, places like uh, Humboldt University and get uh, new uh, development and new knowledge of disaster management. Chaminder, uh, we know that you have studied and lived in some European countries such as uh, Germany, Spain, uh, Switzerland and Sweden and have uh, done research on a uh, Sri Lankan diaspora in Europe. How do you think uh, Sri Lanka can use diaspora community in the development of post-war Sri Lanka uh, constructively? Yeah, this is I think a very important and timely question because uh, now in Sri Lankan context we understand diaspora as very negative and it's a politically charged uh, term. So uh, because it's I think poorly understood uh, term. Now, we have not done any scientific or systematic uh, research or study to understand diaspora. Diaspora is a new uh, scenario in the world, uh, new world order. Now, uh, as a, for example, I would say now not all uh, Tamil diaspora are pro LTT. Now, sometimes we use in Sri Lankan terminology, diaspora means uh, LTT. So that should not be the case. Now, for example, of course, there are different diaspora, female diaspora, Tamil diaspora, and Tamil diaspora, but then among Tamil diaspora also we have co Tamil LTT, uh, neutral as well as anti LTT diaspora. So uh, my suggestion is that we have to try to understand it more systematically and also uh, to get their expertise in nation building and development on post country Sri Lanka. Now I am saying that now we, I have seen and I have uh, studied about many examples where uh, some diaspora members are successful in their post countries as professionals, particularly second generation and third generation diaspora members are becoming more uh, knowledgeable, educated and politically influential. So we should have uh, organized institutions, uh, mechanisms to integrate, get their services as well as to recognize them as a part of Sri Lankan society. Now, it is not something uh, uh, kind of uh, you need to Sri Lanka if you look at the uh, cases of maybe in India, Poland, Ireland, there are many other country examples. Uh, they have successfully uh, integrated diaspora expertise and diaspora as a community in uh, forming their uh, nation. So I think we should uh, first of all do more studies and understand diaspora as a new social situation and uh, uh, do more studies on that. Plus, uh, we have to change uh, local orientation and attitudes toward the term and also uh, the community. As a researcher based in Sri Lanka, could you share with us uh, your thoughts about the present tension between Muslim community and some extremist groups such as uh, Bodhubal Sena, uh, Ramana Force, etc. Uh, tell us also your ideas on how to improve the situation. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, again a kind of good question, but I remember you asked a similar question one year ago. Now, my answer that time was different because uh, maybe one year ago, a lot of people, including myself, we thought that these are individual events and that will not, uh, you know, continue based on the uh, previous experience in Sri Lanka. However, we have seen now organizations like Bodhubala Sena, Ravana, Balaka and other similar organizations now gathering momentum and uh, uh, also strong uh, fellowship, media attention and even uh, political support, particularly from the part of the government. So it is becoming a kind of a negative uh, development in Sri Lankan uh, society because it's challenging and threatening the multicultural and democratic social fabric of Sri Lankan society. So uh, I think uh, people who believe in democracy uh, peaceful coexistence among communities and believers on rule of law, which is not, not uh, common to many Sri Lankan, they should fight against these causes. Now, what I mean by fight means there should be ideological confrontation, uh, uh, dialogue with them, as well as debate, maybe uh, uh, transfer to the society and then try to uh, you know negate these uh, causes which are threatening to Sri Lankan society and its uh, image nationally and internationally. Uh, just to follow up what you said, uh, some think that in Sri Lanka this inaction and silence of the intellectuals, uh, I mean a majority of them, allows this kind of uh, extremism to grow. 
is it fair to say that a majority of Sri Lankan intellectuals are not voicing their views and that gives an opportunity for the extremists to dominate the political conversation in Sri Lanka? I think now, I, I think this is something new in Sri Lankan society. For example, therefore, you get a lot of media and attention and it expands. Uh, and one other reason is normally in Sri Lankan academics have been kind of delayed in intervening into different issues related to uh, you know, this conflict or even, uh, you know, this uh, uh, free education. So I think what they are coming up now, but also uh, because of the government's uh, Kind of affiliation. I am not saying that they are part of the government, but we see some indicators and uh, some events where uh, uh, people felt that it's blessed by the government. So maybe uh, 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 that issue is also there. But uh, you can see now some development where individual members or activists are trying to kind of intervene in to the discussion and uh, try to discuss. But as you know, in Sri Lanka, debates are normally political debates are sometimes can be violent or sometimes you know, can have personal threats. So maybe those are the issues. But I'm sure uh, there will be a you know, counter force uh, uh, trying to intervene to this uh, uh, you know, nationalistic movement. Uh, these days, uh, Sri Lankan government is uh, preparing for the Commonwealth uh, Summit that will be held in Colombo in November. Um, in your view, how important this Commonwealth Summit for Sri Lanka? Yeah, there is a you know school of thought saying that uh, commonwealth is not common is not very important anymore. But I still think that you know uh, when you hold a summit like commonwealth, uh, it's very uh, crucial for a country to uh, represent and even uh, uh, demonstrate their image and improve their international uh, brand. However, now this is a tricky situation because in, uh, now as you all know, Sri Lanka has been accused by organizations like UN and some other countries of war crime. So uh, it's, a, it's a, uh, a kind of tricky situation because that can be also work as in a negative way. Uh, now, for example, the British government has already declared that they will use the Commonwealth to uh, negotiate and even uh, tell Sri Lankan government to respect human rights and uh, have a transparent uh, process of the war crime complaint. So, uh, I think that will be based on how government take this as an event or as an opportunity where they can purify themselves of uh, you know, uh, doing some kind of investigation of individual events and getting, uh, you know, the, if there are uh, culprits to the law or punish them and uh, make this opportunity to uh, make Sri Lanka either as a democratic multicultural society in the 21st century or still continue with defensive and denial mode uh, for, uh, for the future. So I think it's a test where this can be used as a uh, good opportunity for us to demonstrate that we are a clean country or maybe uh, that can be an like, event where we will have more threats to uh, or challenges to overcome. My last question to you is about the rule of law in Sri Lanka. Now many especially many Sri Lankans living outside Sri Lanka have this perception that in Sri Lanka there is no law and order and that a rule of law does not prevail in Sri Lanka. Your thoughts? I think, yeah, but basically now, even though I live in Sri Lanka, I mean, I, uh, uh, I watch both national and international news and I see how, I mean, how this can be seen from outside, which is very, very uh, important question because uh, as a Sri Lankan living in Sri Lanka, I have the same concern and same, uh, uh, for example, fears. So uh, there's a serious uh, issue happening in Sri Lanka uh, on breaking rule of law and politicization of uh, institutions. So this is a dangerous situation. However, now we had more negative situations, for example, uh, before 1994, uh, uh, you know, 80s, late 80s, we still uh, remember. I also expect some kind of rectification process in the government. Now, when you say government, government is a, not a homogeneous entity, even they want to be like that. So you see internal debate, internal discussion, internal disagreements happening in the government, uh, but then still I think the, uh, the so-called 
uh, anti-progressive forces are very powerful. So therefore, you see police is influenced by the politicians, politicians involved in crimes. So, uh, but you know, in a democratic society, it takes time, a discussion, debate, even sometimes mistakes uh, before uh, streamlining them. So I still have hope about Sri Lanka society as a clinic. Those things will be improved, but as citizens, we also as people who are living out of Sri Lanka should also be a part of an active uh, contribution of rectifying the Sri Lanka society. But uh, this uh, situation, they are true and they are happening. So we should be concerned and try to uh, con contribute to uh, get out of these negative conditions. That concludes our news edition. We meet you again with another news edition of News, Views and Entertainment from Boston and USA. Till then, goodbye.